hearing itself. They now realize they are hearing an echo from the dawn of time. The Big Bang was so powerful and so hot, remnants of that heat still survive. The heat began as super hot X-ray radiation. As it stretched and cooled, it became visible light, shifting from blue to red, then becoming microwaves and finally radio waves. This faint radiation shines down on Earth all the time. It's called cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB. The cosmic microwave background is the echo of creation itself. It's the embers, the afterglow of the original shock wave that created the universe. If we had microwave eyes, eyes that could see microwave radiation, then every night we would see the Big Bang coming out. Looking at the heavens, we would actually see an explosion. More than 13 billion years later, we have a way to see this cosmic glow with the naked eye. You take your TV set, switch it between channels. A couple percent of the static that you see on your TV screen is radiation from the Big Bang. This cosmic radiation is a direct connection to the Big Bang. It also reveals the universe entered a new phase, less than a trillionth of a second after its creation. Cosmic radiation is the key to discovering what happens next. A few beats of Planck time tick by on our cosmic clock, and the fireball universe is transformed. One instant, the universe is billions of times smaller than an atom. The next, it inflates to the size of a baseball, growing more in this moment than in all the 13.7 billion years to come. Scientists call this rapid expansion inflation, and the evidence survives in the cosmic radiation left over from the Big Bang. Like static on your television, this cosmic radiation seems so constant and so even, it presents scientists with a puzzle. When we measure the cosmic microwave background in, in that direction, its temperature is identical to its temperature in that direction. It's the same everywhere. The only explanation is the universe inflates countless times faster than the speed of light. Inflation expands the fireball universe evenly like a balloon blowing up with a phenomenal breath of energy. I try to imagine compressing a spring. I push it closer and closer and closer together so it's smaller and smaller and smaller. And I've stored a tremendous amount of energy in that spring. And when I let it go, it bursts out. And that stored energy drove an exponential expansion of space. But if the entire universe is uniform from the first second after the Big Bang onward, how did the galaxies form? Planets and stars begin as clusters of particles. Over time, these particles of matter clump together under the force of gravity to form a dense mass. Earth began as a ball of particles that clumped together through friction and gravity. The sun that sustains life on Earth started out as a cloud of gas and dust. How did these clusters form in the first place? The early universe should be lumpy, not even. To link the formation of stars and planets all the way back to the first second after the Big Bang, NASA scientists like David Spurgle developed the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP, a satellite mission to measure the temperature of cosmic radiation in more detail than ever before. While this radiation is everywhere, it's very faint. And to observe it in great detail across the whole sky, you want to get away from the Earth and any interfering sources of radiation. Seven, igniter is armed, green board, five, 
NASA launches the probe in 2001. Main engine start and liftoff of the Delta II rocket with the MAP spacecraft, exploring the past and future of our universe. It could produce the best ever snapshot of the universe in its first second. The launch was incredibly exciting, tense, but exciting moment to see it go up and then realize it was working. WMAP sits a million miles from Earth. It's so sensitive, it can measure the temperature of cosmic radiation within a millionth of a degree. For five years, WMAP analyzes the sky in minute detail. It sits there with the Earth and Sun always behind it, staring out into space. The satellite's spinning very rapidly. It covers about a third of the sky every hour, spinning and making maps of the leftover radiation. WMAP tracks the Earth as it orbits the sun and scans the temperature of the whole sky. It generates detailed temperature maps like this one, and it reveals something remarkable. The blue and red patches on this map of the entire sky are tiny ripples in temperature. The little blue regions represent regions that are a few tens of thousands of degrees colder. Red regions are a little bit hotter, so you're seeing tiny variations in temperature across the sky. WMAP looks back over 13 billion years. As the universe evolves, these tiny ripples develop into clusters of particles that get bigger and bigger under the force of gravity, becoming just dense enough to trigger stars and galaxies to form. This is a map of how the universe looked in the first second after the Big Bang, the template for today's vast cosmos. When the picture of the cosmic microwave background radiation first came out, the press said, ah, the face of God. Well, <laughs> let's be real. It's not the face of God. What it really is, is a, a baby picture, a baby picture of the infant universe. So the discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation ranks as one of the greatest discoveries in all of science. Less than a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, the fireball universe rapidly expands. Now an ultra-hot globe big enough to sit in the palm of your hand, the universe is seething with energy and radiation. But as the palm-sized universe expands and cools, something new starts to form. Only a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, and the destiny of the universe is already mapped out. The sun burns because of forces forged more than 13 billion years ago. The stars and planets form from the way the universe rapidly expands. Science can trace everything we see today back to the first second of creation. But we're here because of what happens in the next few beats of Planck time. The universe is flooded with the building blocks of matter. So far on our cosmic clock, the early universe is nothing but energy. How did pure energy turn into matter? Everything around you is made of matter. What you're sitting on, the air you breathe, the whole planet is made of matter, and matter is made of atoms. And in the first second after the Big Bang, the ingredients for atoms are created. How matter appeared mystified scientists, until 1905, when Albert Einstein comes up with our most famous equation. E equals mc squared. Einstein's equation tells us that energy, E, and mass, m, are different forms of the same thing. Matter and energy are interchangeable. 
Some scientists later used this equation to create the most destructive weapon in history, the atomic bomb. It offers a clue to what happened in the first second. In a nuclear explosion, particles of matter are ripped apart to produce an enormous amount of energy. During the Big Bang, the exact opposite happens. An enormous amount of energy turns into matter. Einstein's equation prompts a conclusion. As the baby universe expands and cools, the pure energy of the Big Bang converts into the particles of matter that make us. We're only a fragment of a second into our journey. The first particles of matter appear. The universe is a million times hotter than at the core of the sun, still far too hot for particles of matter to bond and form atoms. Scientists face a puzzle. What is this early state of matter like? And how does it become the protons and neutrons that form every atom in the universe? Atoms were impossible. Think of putting an ice cube in a steam bath. The ice cube would melt immediately. You cannot have ice cubes in a steam bath. You can see the proof in a block of ice. When water is cold enough, it's a solid. Warm it, and you get a liquid. Heat liquid water, and it boils away into a gas, water vapor. Superheat the gas, and the energy pumped in rips the atoms apart. Likewise, the universe in the first second is so hot